Welcome to my channel. As you know, we've been working on this page swap, some of us. And I did a journal with some of the page swaps I had. And this is six page swaps. I barely have um, three pages per swap. Some's got two, I think. There's three there. Yeah, so this is barely three in each spot. So that's not a big journal. So what I did, I made this journal. This holds per signature, and if you see that, it will hold um, six pages to seven pages per signature. So it's about 380 pages front and back. Actually, be a bit more. But we'll say that for now. Now, this will hold more because of the amount of pages that are in it. Look, this is not decorated. I've put things in it, bulky stuff to show you. Like it's so neat inside. It's really neat. And to stitch it in and all that, I've made it a lot easier as well. So, as you can see, that's a beautiful spine. That even for Bohemian Crafting is where I first seen the corset stitch. Eva did hers at a Nanch. I felt having 12 signatures in this journal, it is not enough. So I did it at one and a half. I think her journal was eight signatures I don't know but something like that so because I want to go bigger again next time I have added two inches to the spine so that I can actually add between 16 to 18 signatures using the same amount of pages like this still hasn't been frayed but and this hasn't been decorated. But this is showing you that it can be achieved, um, it can be done, and it can look really neat and tidy. Like I said, there's no pockets. Because I only did this just to show you an alternative way of doing the journals. So with this, what I've learnt, and you can go to Eva's page and you'll be able to work it out. This is a two inch spine because I want to like I said make between a 16 to 18 signature journal again with between six to seven pages so what I've done is I started where am I this is the top so I've left them at the top but I've decided that my top is my bottom. For the simple fact, I want these hanging down. So when you start the journal, you start at one inch and work your way down, marking. Now, to mark them is simple. I get my... Uh, where's my marks? There's my mat. And what I do, if you've got a good mat, you'll be able to line this really easily. But you need a very long ruler because your smaller ruler ain't going to do the job. So if we go like that, right, you're going to need a ruler that is very long. So I use my metal ruler for the length so because we started it from this way right, and I've decided I needed that down because it looks better 
So what you do, and this is what, how I've done it, Eva does it slightly different. Now we'll pretend that is not there. So what I've done is gone every inch and marked it all the way down. And then after I've marked it across, because you've got to mark it across. And then what you do, so we'll do away with that roller because we don't need it no more. And look, you got in you got to keep the position. Um, you got to make sure this is positioned carefully on your mat. Obviously, you won't have the ribbon there. So what I did, and what Eva does, is she marks this at a quarter of an inch. So it's a quarter of an inch down. So use your pen, quarter an inch down for your centre, a quarter of an inch down for there, and again there. So because you've ruled it all down, then you get your pen or texture, which is what I used, and you mark your holes. Your holes are between the lines. If you can see this, your holes are between the lines. So you'll be able to mark it. So that's what I did, and um, it matched. But you just got to make sure these boards do not move, otherwise that will be out of um, whack. Like I said, I plan to do a 16-pager. Now you also need three-quarter inch of the standard eyelets from We Are When We Keepers. And you need um, two, four, six, eight, ten... 12, 14, 16. So you need 32. So with this one, I'd run out of the white because I really wanted the white. I wanted two colours because of the ribbon as well. So anyway, then what I did is I got my scoreboard, get myself ready to do um, my, show you what I mean, my, mark my 12 signatures. So because we're going by the, with the fierce spine and we're doing pamphlet stitch, I use the scoreboard much easier and I always mark my top like eventually I will do a video doing that completely but for now I thought let's concentrate on signatures because everybody can make make a wide spine if you can't then I will be able to sort it out at some stage so what I've done I'm using, this is my guide because that's my centre, so I don't bugger up. So I used it at the, three and four. So that's my um, fine board. So I'll be able to now line this up. So what I do, um, we'll start at the 10. I've got to make sure it's there. Wait a minute, is in the correct? Yeah. Just making sure. So I'm using a pencil because I like to see my lines. Um, what am I doing? What am I doing? Sorry, guys. I'm doing things back to front. Don't worry about that bit. So we want to make our 12 signatures. And don't take any notice of that line. So what I did for each signature, so we'll start at the two. So the first 
our first marking, I've got to make sure that is in correct mode, is going to be at two and a half. Then at three, because we want to put 12 signatures in. I was confusing myself then. Sorry about that. So we keep doing this each quarter till we get to six. This is the easiest way I know to do 12 signatures. And especially to what we've been doing. So now what we do, we go in there, we go in there, so in between, so your little notch, I don't know if you can see that, you keep doing that, missed one, whoops, I hate these scoreboards. And I couldn't find my stylus, but pencil suits me better for this. Um, and there. And there. So realistically, you've got a three and three quarter inch spine. Oh, we didn't mark one yet back there. We've got to mark it. So, what we do, again, go into the middle of that. Don't take, look, honestly, I've mucked this up. But, you understand where I'm getting at. So, that's your 12, because that's how I do it. If I could find my stylus, and see how it is there, you can see it. So, then what I do, I take it across, and again... What I do, we want the top to be there. So I start off at, how did I do it? Yeah, I start off. We've got to make sure it's correct. Actually, yeah, no, that's correct. So what we do, we'll put it on the nine. Right, so what we're doing is we're marking it there. We're marking it there. We're marking it there. There. So you use your uh, middle of your spine thing as a template. I'll explain that more in a second. So you're using this as your template because I've already scored it. And then put my, my dots in. And again, what I do to make life easier for me, I mark it this way. I find this easy for me. You might have other options, but when you're doing a 12 signature, it's so easy to get confused. Now, this is the 12, pan 12 uh, five pamphlet stitch for 12 signature. But I'm used to doing a different way. That's why I'm getting confused with this way. But I thought to make life easier, I'll do the five hole. So then you just go around and place your dots. And then you've got no confusion. you just got to get your markings correct. So please just take this as an example and nothing more. Now, another um, trick I learnt, and a lot of us don't use it, is we do our holes and everything. And... Say this is our book, so we need the we need that much. So that must be three and three quarter spine. 
So what we tend to do is we try and centre our paper. Don't centre your paper. Make sure your top is at the top and bring your paper to the bottom. And then when you're doing your signatures, you're sewing them in, it's fair even. I'll show you what I mean. You've got an even journal. It's not topsy toby it's even because you start it from the bottom. Now, I hope this has made sense. If it hasn't, I'll get back to you because I do want to elaborate oops, further on the spine because when we make these sorts of covers, we really need two to three mil cardstock, real heavy cardstock. You normally find them with um, your artist pads, those heavy duty cardstock. Now also, um, another thing with them is, I line mine with fabric, as you've seen. I don't normally do that, but because this is the first time, I decided to do it with fabric. Now, what I do is get, um, because once you sew your signatures in, again, you need to measure. There's my artist pad. But you can use one that's a bit softer than this. Because this is a, just a mil and a half, I think. So I reckon a bit softer, because you need something to give support to your spine. You get your, your fabric. Once you've cut this and you've given your spine support, because what I actually do, this is my template. I get the glue. I stick this down on fabric. Then I use my owl to punch it in. And I give myself an allowance of at least two inches that way and two inches that way. And then what I do is glue it down and that is my, then is what you see inside my journal. So that is just my template to make the holes and sew in. This is just photo matte paper. This is all I use to do my journals photo matte paper. Sometimes I have used um, tie deck. I find this works better for me because I can actually get everything straight. Now, because of the way I put my, see, you'll see it's all even. Um, and you'll see the fabric. And I always tea dye it because it looks that much better. See, once I've frayed this, this will work in together. So I'm hoping oh, I've given you some ideas to work with for now. Because it's going to be a bit of time. So what I do is do that with that. We'll take that away because we've done that. We've sewn in our signatures after we've glued this in. You've got your template for your centre which, like I said, we use that. Then we need that chipboard to support your centre again. Because if you're going to make a big journal, if you don't have that support, this is going to be wonky, very, very wonky. So we, this is where Eva doesn't go in depth with that, but I will. So you need that extra board for support. It's really important you add that in. So what I do, because I used fabric and I haven't done it with paper, because I like the idea of lining my journal with fabric, me thinking is once the centre, once we have glued in our chipboard, so we'll pretend that's our chipboard, so once we've glued that, into our journal we then have got 
an empty signature that's ready to sewn. You've given it the support it needs. I think your best option would be to grab your thinnest cardstock. This is not my thinnest cardstock. If you want to put fabric underneath it, because this is not my thinnest cardstock, it makes it hard. I would cut the panels to the measurements of these, but don't go to there. And then I would stick them to my fabric. Don't worry about the centre because you've already got the support there. Unless you stick your um, support onto that and then the other piece of this. Because you only really need five and whatever it was. Five, five, and, five and three quarters. So you get two out of that. So you'd split them up. You put your spine in there because you need support when you are sticking your fabric on. You can't just stick your fabric on completely with one sheet of paper. It ain't going to work. So, again, utilising your scoreboard, you can't your pages to fit that so I'm hoping I'm making sense because I didn't want to do this and do it all the way through because it's too hard or take too long too I just want to give you some ideas of how I went about doing the corset please go and watch Eva on Bohemian um, Crafts She's got lots of good ideas that really work. Only thing is, if you want to go bigger, like I said, the only way you're going to do it is you, you need support on your spine. A lot of support. So I've got one and a half inch. I think Eva's got an inch. Then I've got the actual, like I said, stronger car stock that's going to go in between the two sheets and um, your fabric. So you always stick this to your fabric because if you don't, you've got no um, mobility with this fabric. And you can actually sew around it if you wanted to to make it look decorative. I didn't do that. Um, another thing I was thinking... Um, yeah, that should cover it. And then it's really important you use your fabric, fabric fix or fabric tack, whatever it may be. Um, you need this for your three um, quarter eyelets. So I don't know if this has made sense, but I thought I'd give it a go. Just give you an idea how to go about making a 12 signature journal the way I would make it and of course it's the way Eva makes it which is really nice I love it the only thing I change is like I said is the width in the spine because the bigger we go the bigger the width has to be so I hope that's made sense and I hope I made sense with how to lay your papers and how then to attach your spine to your fabric. So you're basically cutting this in half and you've got that there, you've got your spine there and then you've got your other piece of paper there, if that makes sense. And... Um, that then will support your journal. So when you go to sew it in, or glue it in, it will measure, I think it was 17 inches altogether. But um, you'll have a fantastic solid spine. 
and that's what counts in the end a solid spine and then you've allowed yourself room for fraying because you're using fabric for the inside as well but also what I did with my fabric with my spine before I forget that one this one which I'll cut to size so I can show you what I mean. There's a lot to learn. So don't worry, it's not perfect. So we've glued that to our fabric. Now what I do, and this is important as well, once you've cut that away, you need a thin piece of paper to glue over your fabric. So only something thin. That it could be as thin as um, photocopy paper. It, you really need that. Then when you've got your journal in, all right, this is hidden away. But what I normally do, once I've glued all this in, um, and it's on completely, and it's stuck to my chipboard if I haven't done that yet. We won't worry about the chipboard, that comes later. So what I do, I've got the paper underneath. So then once I glue um, my signature completely in, I will use my scoring tool to score it. So you've got that bend on each side. Then we're going to be gluing that down into your um, journal. But I'll show you that later on. At the moment is learning how to get that together. Because when I did this, it's really hard to explain without doing it in front of you actually. When I did this and I laid down the fabric and everything, this was the markings here because I put, I stuck that on. So then um, it left me where I had to put my paper, if you can see what I mean. So we can hide that um, part I use to stick down on my journal because you're laying your fabric so you need something to lay over the fabric, if you get what I mean. And that's going to give your journal so much support that it won't fall apart. So I'm hoping that made sense. I'm even um, it confused with if I'm explaining it correctly. But I will elaborate more when I've got more time. I will show you more when I've got time. To me, this is a good journal. Now, if you're doing um, one of these journals, make sure you've picked your inside, I mean your outside pages. Don't worry about the inside. I picked the inside of that. I don't know why, because really I don't need it yet. But, yeah, so I'm real happy with that. And like I said, if you follow what I used and use the chipboard, after this is glued to your signature, your chipboard should be glued to that. And then we're going to pretend we've got all our papers and chipboard. Well, you don't have to put your chipboard down because it's already on there. But you can have it down here instead to make life easier. But I prefer to put it on my journal. For the simple reason is you get a better finish. See how much better your finish is on your journal? So that's why it's really important that um, you figure it all out before you stick anything down. You've got to figure out that it actually is working for you. But I'm really happy with that. Even though that's not fully decorated yet, I love the spine. This needs a lot more work to it. 
um, like I said, I only put things in it that don't even belong in it just to show you that you can fit a lot in this journal. But thanks for watching. I hope that made sense. It confused me. But anyway, that's what happens. Thank you. Bye.